and this is my person, this is my own personal belief. It's the way I read the Bible, the way I understand the Bible. That when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Amen. and then you have God's Spirit within you, yes. there's major things that happen. There's changes that take place. Old friends are no longer friends. You get That's new right. friends. Right. The acquaintance that will get you in trouble, you don't have them anymore. God just kind of pulls them away from you to protect you. The word of knowledge is an inspiration given by the Spirit of God to your spirit that you have an insight or know something about one or many individuals. And then God can reveal this to you so that you can be a comfort or help or exhortation or whatever to lift that person up or to let that person know that God's got His eye on you and that He watches over you and that He protects you. Then you have faith. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for and it's an evidence of something that's never been seen. What makes faith work is that whatever you're hoping for, it comes about and it becomes reality and then you know that God heard your prayer. A lot of people beg, beg God for something thinking that that's what makes God make things happen and it's not. It's your faith and trust and belief in God. Healings. Most of us in here have received healings or a healing of some type through your life that we have to assume that God has the credit or gets the credit. I've been healed several times. I've been healed of stuff and I don't even know what it was because I didn't I didn't dwell on the pain or whatever it was. But I happened to be in a service where the anointing of God was Amen. and God healed me before I left that place. And see, a lot of times people come to church and they think the man or woman of God is the one that is the instrument to lay the hand on you to cause you to get healed, and that's not true. All you got to do is worship the Lord, get caught up in the Spirit, and let God take care of that for you. You can have a pain in your body right now. I don't even look at you, talk to you, or shake your hand or nothing. And before you leave this place, you could be healed of whatever that pain was causing you. Amen. Then you have the working of miracles. This is a gift where God uses an individual to work a miracle. A lot of times you get more than what you ask God for. You may ask God to help you with your headaches or what's causing you to have the headaches and God to deal with other issues in your body. And that man or woman of God that's praying for you is working a miracle by the contact he has with God. And you have the discernment of spirits. That is a very, very important gift in your life. Keep in mind this gift is so that you know and recognize something that's real and something that's not. If you do not know, and I'm going to give you an example here in a minute. Amen. You've heard me talk about different types of Bibles and interpretations of Bibles. And people say, well, I don't understand that. Well, let me tell you how you can understand and Get the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. Get the Spirit of God and get Amen. into the Word. And God will reveal the hidden mysteries to you. Discernment of spirits is one where someone will be your friend, but something inside tells you they're not really your friend. And later on, they do something harm to you, or they may steal from you, or they do something, and then you realize what the Spirit was trying to warn you of. And that's an important gift to have. Amen. Then you have divers of tongues. That's different types of tongues. There is a tongue that speaks directly to God. That is your actual prayer message tongue. Amen. That's the one that goes to and fro. It goes out to God, comes back to you, and then there's other ones that maybe there's someone sitting in the congregation or maybe you're praying for somebody that you don't even know, you never will see, but the Spirit of God is going from you to that individual touching that person. I've had people tell me that they had dreams about me. Well, I walked in their room and I said something to them and they got healed. I don't know about that. I don't know nothing about leaving someplace, but I know my pastor has said many times, yes. not several, many times, God took him out of his body while he was preaching and going to a hospital or going to some other state and God doing something for him. I don't know if any of you know about this, but he at one time was considered to be and still is, is the mystery hitchhiker. And if you don't know what the mystery hitchhiker is, that's where he appears in cars and witnesses of people and disappears. And I know that that's a fact. Amen. Then there's the interpretation of the tongue. 
That's the one where whatever was spoken, you can understand it's interpreted for several reasons. For exhortation, for comfort. It's also a, a, a warning, a prophecy that tells you things that are coming that you may be aware of. If you're not paying attention to what's going on over in Israel, it's right here. It's in that book. They said the other day on the news that all the people in the Senate 100% for the first time agree with Israel doing what they're doing. But watch, that's going to change. Somebody in there is going to upset the apple cart because the Bible says that everybody's going to turn against Israel in the end time. That's the reason why the Christians need to band together and pray for Israel. Don't pray for peace because the Bible says there ain't going to be none. He said when you pray for peace, Suddenly comes what? Destruction. Destruction. You pray in tongues, and then you have an interpretation of the tongues. It might be for the whole church sometimes. It might be a warning to prepare you for what is soon to come about. And when it's coming, you better be ready. And then don't be caught saying, well, I didn't know. There's a purpose of having the gifts. Amen. And you can have as many of these gifts as you want. In fact, I believe this. This is my belief. That if you have God's Spirit, you have all nine gifts. But not all nine gifts are going to manifest because you can't be trusted with all of them to manifest. There are spirits of bitterness. That they're angry about somebody that did something to them that they just can't let it go. I heard on the news yesterday that they now are taking DNA tests to find out how many people have suicidal thoughts. Anybody see that on the news? Yeah. Okay, saw it. And the DNA tells them where that generation of thoughts of suicide comes from. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that causes people to want to give up, throw in the towel, and figure that nobody loves them. That's a self-pity spirit. That's another one on the, on the scene. Well, they don't love me. They don't feel sorry for me. They don't talk to me. They didn't shake my hand. They didn't even look at me today. Then you got a spirit of pride. Somebody that thinks they're God's gift to women or a man. They think that everybody should lift them up on a pedestal. Sometimes you wonder why the things that you want so bad that God won't let you have them and it's because lust is built into it. It says you desire and you obtain not. You fight and war yet ye have not because you asked not you ask and receive not because you asked amiss you ask amiss that means you ask for something that God don't want you to have you know why God tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and then all these things shall be added unto you? Seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you because Amen. in the kingdom of God, it's your heart. Amen. This is where it starts. Amen. When He opens up that heart, He starts revealing the things in there that offend Him. Like lying, prejudice, stealing, lusting, hatred, Pride. All these things, they're spirits. And they come in clusters whether you realize this or not.